Uh, so my name is Eric. I've been at HubSpot for about five years, uh, and I'm on the uh, kind of MySQL slash by test orchestration team, uh, which sort of is responsible for the administration and kind of automation and orchestration of SQL. Uh, and I'm from Boston. Uh, for you this morning. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about what HA is uh, and why it's important, and probably this is not a mystery to anybody here in the room. Uh, and then I'm gonna, we'll talk about kind of building HA automation, kind of uh, conceptually, like using the framework of by tests, and also consider some interesting the failover scenarios. Uh, so there will be some kind of questions for you. Uh, kind of in the previous iteration, I kind of had some like a slide of thinking, so you'll just have to kind of think about your answers or shout them out if you're feeling uh, for skill. Um, so it's 12.30 a.m. and Jeff uh, Dazzles unplugs the server rack in Jesse's one. Uh, and uh, luckily, you sleep through the nights uh, because of HA. Uh, you know, the database does not go down and you don't get reached. Uh, and so for HubSpot, and I'm sure many of you guys uh, kind of, our stuff exists in the cloud. You know, things are constantly failing. We can't expect to 100% uptime. Uh, and you know, even though Amazon might print promise ninety nine point ninety nine percent of time, like even that is suspiciously like low, or I don't know. Sometimes it must just seem to fail more often than that. Uh, and the AWS reps like refuse to tell us why. Uh, so you need to be resilient to failure. Um, so kind of a quick overview of my tests. If you're not familiar, but Probably people are. You know, we have an app that talks to a VTK that sends queries to the primaries. Uh, and for us, kind of importantly, you know, both read and write queries are going to primaries, and we don't do really about the reads uh, at the moment anyway. Uh, so when something fails, uh, you know, the new primary is promoted. Uh, the VTK will route the queries to that new primary. Uh, the the other replica is hooked up to that primary. Uh, and then we do a restore of the old primary. Uh, and so I should mention also that uh, at HubSpot we use kind of a primary and two replicas for all of our databases, and sometimes we have three replicas. Uh, but kind of this is the kind of resiliency that we have. Um, and then finally, this kind of third replica will finish restoring from an older backup and hooks up to the new primary. Uh, and kind of we're back to our original states of a replica, and, uh, or sorry, a primary and two replicas. Um, so kind of what are the constraints here uh, when it comes to HA? So we want uh, the automation that handles this to be kind of nearly seamless, and we want disruptions to last 30, kind of fewer than 30 seconds. And we don't really want a human required, although we shall see some kind of scenarios that violate this a little bit. Um, so I'm going to walk us through kind of building uh, this like HA automation. Uh, and so what kind of do we need to do in order to like uh, be able to kind of have a tool that, that does this? Uh, so let's call our tool Orchestrator. Uh, and so we have three SQL instances, you know, a, a primary and two replicas. Orchestrator is connecting to uh, each instance um, and it's querying this, these instances like about once every 10 seconds. Uh, and so Orchestrator, it needs to kind of have a name for each instance. And uh, in this case, it's just the host name. Um, and then a kind of a Boolean field of is it healthy, which is a yes or a no. And to determine if something is healthy or not, Orchestrator kind of simply issues a select one query, which is extremely basic, like basically is the MySQL database off the or is it not? Uh, and so kind of this is our, our kind of graph in the Orchestrator's memory where you know we have three instances and just the name and it isn't healthy or not. Um, and then finally uh, a connected to where the primary is not connected to anything, but then the replica will have what it's connected to. And we get that from uh, another MySQL query shows slave status. 
Uh, so that's all we need, right? Uh, well, what happens? Uh, so we're kind of we're running along fine, uh, and all of a sudden, uh, the primary is no longer healthy. Uh, uh, what do we do here? Um, so, four options here. Uh, like, what will our trader do in this situation? Kind of, this is all we know. Uh, this is kind of this naive implementation. And so, in this situation, we'll fail over to either replica. You know, both replicas are healthy. We don't know anything more about that, so let's just move on and fail over to it. Um, so, a problem with this is that it's kind of vulnerable to flips where networks aren't always reliable. We're acting on only a few seconds of data, and so we only have one source of information that's ourselves. Uh, we can't really do anything about one and two. Uh, so we'll sort of see if we can address three by adding another source of information. Uh, and this is a new sort of field in, in the orchestrator memory of connection error, uh, which is also a ruling of yes or no. And that comes conveniently from this show status command. Uh, so the connection error on, on both replicas uh, is normally kind of a no, but uh, you know, in the situation where the primary dies and becomes unhealthy, uh, uh, both replicas will say that they have no connection error. So now our trader will not do anything uh, because we sort of assume that our trader itself has kind of an unreliable view of the world that this may be kind of a network partition or is experiencing problems itself. Um, so, yeah, the, uh, and something I didn't mention in the beginning, but kind of all the kind of situations I'm describing here have happened to us in HubSpot and sort of our problems that we kind of dealt with and learned from. Uh, and so this is kind of a nice problem not to have. Um, oh, oops. So on to uh, on to you know back to building on the trader. So uh, oh, okay, we're on a fresh kind of uh, we're on a fresh database here, and all of a sudden uh, one of the replicas uh, you know gets disconnected. Uh, you know everything's healthy, but the replica is just simply disconnected. Uh, what will the trader do here? Uh, and again, this is kind of the naive orchestrator that, you know, this is all we know. And kind of the options here are we connect 3.3 back to the primary, uh, connect things to 3.3 or do nothing. Uh, and in this situation, orchestrator is not going to do anything. Uh, and or, like 3.3 is a valid, healthy MySQL primary. Uh, orchestrator is not really aware of the desired states. Uh, so it doesn't really know that 3.3 is supposed to be connected to 1.1. Um, and that is where the Vitesse topology comes in. Uh, because it would be nice if we had something that knew that like 3.3 should be connected to 1.1 and it becomes that for us. Um, so the Vitesse topology is a distributed key value store in Zookeeper, at least for HubSpot. Uh, and has metadata about database state and is used by DTBs, as everyone here knows, I'm sure. Um, so I might skip through this a little bit because uh, I think this is probably everyone here knows this, but uh, sort of a very general overview of the Vitesse topology. Um, and the Vitesse topology allows us to kind of evolve. And now our trader can connect to the Vitesse topology itself, where um, it can uh, get a database name, uh, query in the instance of MySQL, and then kind of map that back to a database in the topology. Uh, and there's also a field in the topology of is primary. That's uh, a yes or a no. Um, and kind of this allows the orchestrator, which is what we'll now call the test orchestrator or VT work, uh, to know that something is a primary and that replicas should be connected to it. Uh, so now, if you go back to the scenario where three out three becomes disconnected, uh, you know, orchestrator, the test orchestrator knows that it should be connected or reconnected. Um, so, VT Org has 
some additional responsibilities in addition to handling failovers. Uh, and the sort of these include keeping replicas connected to the connect primary, keeping primaries read write and replicas read only, and more. Uh, and so, you know, these are are not exactly the core function of VT work, but these are extremely helpful to the kind of the uh, overall health of our system. And we used to have to build tools to kind of do each of these things uh, independently, and kind of we were able to scrap all those when we migrated onto VT work uh, last year. Um, I was talking about MySQL replication primer, primer, but I think people are probably familiar and in the interest of time, I'm going to skip that. Uh, I do, I'll, I'll, this last slide, uh, sort of the two takeaways from that primer, primer um, is that with MySQL replication, uh, at least one replica will have saved all transactions which the primer is committed. Uh, or sorry, let me, let me back up. So we run the uh, semi-synchronous replication of HubSpot. Uh, and so in with semi-sync, uh, which you may or may not use, uh, but with semi-sync, at least one replica will have saved all the transactions which the primary is committed. And these transactions may not be applied by the replica. And if they're not all applied, we'll call the replica to be flagged. Uh, so going back to building of a test orchestrator. Uh, we're going to add a new field, and it's going to be the replication lag, and that's the kind of uh, difference between the transactions that are applied by the replica and the, the logged transactions. Um, and so uh, we're on to a new example here where we're in a fresh database, and both replicas are extremely lagged. Uh, in the millions of transactions, which we'll say is like two or three hours. Uh, so the primary dies, and now we're asking ourselves, what should orchestrator do? Because this, I think, is you know somewhat open to debate, and it's, it's more of a uh, kind of a should question. So, and uh, this is you know what we do at HubSpot, and kind of I think is also the default configuration that provide tests. Uh, and this also assumes that we're going to have a human that's going to get reached, uh, like and kind of respond within 10 minutes if sort of things don't fix themselves. Uh, so the primary dies, you have two lagged replicas. Uh, what do we do here? We can fail over now, or we can you know, wait for a replica to reach zero lag and then fail over it. Uh, what we're going to do is nothing. Or we'll, uh, we're going to wait for that book to reach zero lag and then fail over to it, which kind of, you know, if the, rap, if the lag is, is long, it's essentially nothing. Um, but specifically, we'll wait up to 30 seconds and then give up. Um, so this is baked into the Vitesse emergency reparent chart, which is extremely nice uh, and kind of you know, allows us not to have any special handling for it. But you know, essentially, if if we fail over uh, while there are these lag transactions, it's going to cause kind of data loss. Uh, and uh, at least at HubSpot, kind of we don't want that to happen. And kind of a machine is not allowed to make that decision. We're going to want a human to kind of make this informed decision based on you know reliability or durability. And you know, usually we prefer reliability, so usually the human will click the button to trigger the ERS and you know take the data loss. Um, but you, you just want the human to make that decision. Um, yeah, this, this happened to HubSpot last year. You know, this was before we were on um, the Vitesse orchestrator, where you know both replicas for a you know, financial database was kind of lagged by a few hours. Um, oh, whoops, okay, this is a bit of a duplicate, but yeah, we ended up with a little bit of data loss on kind of a, a payments related database, and that was not so good. Uh, so, for our final kind of interesting situation, um, we're starting with a, uh, a healthy cluster, and uh, it's not lagged at all. Uh, so, the primary goes down. And we fail over successfully, 
And now we have a single primary and a single replica. Uh, now the new primary fails. Uh, what should Order Trader do here? And again, this is maybe debatable. Uh, so we can fail over now, or we can wait until we see a, a second healthy replica and then fail over to that. Uh, so what we have chosen to do, and I think also is the, the default uh, behavior for uh, VT walking when you see the parents, is to uh, wait until we see a second healthy replica and then fail over to one of the replicas. Uh, or to put you know, in another way, you know, don't fail over if there's a single remaining replica. Uh, and so, kind of again, we don't want the machine to make this decision for us. Uh, kind of, if, if there are two primary outages in a row, uh, that is very suspicious and means that there might be more that are likely. Uh, but, you know, again, a human is going to get the age of those lines and kind of they're allowed to make a decision if they want. Uh, to fail over to that final replica or not. Uh, so this also caused a, a quite significant outage in HubSpot last year, where there was sort of a novel MySQL bug that crashed MySQL permanently, uh, and it was caused by a particular query. So you know the primary crashed, we would uh, fail over to the new replica, and then someone would run the query again, and then the new primary would uh, crash. And we had, this was also before we moved on to the, the speed work. So, you know, we decided we wanted to fail over to the final primary, or rather, we didn't decide, but the decision was made for us. Uh, the final primary crashed. Uh, you know, we had a mega outage. It was, it was out for a very long time. We had to restore it from order backup, uh, and that caused data loss in a very long time. Uh, so we had added a custom patch to the orchestrator. But then once we migrated to Vitesse Order Trader, we no longer needed that because they had it, you know, baked in, which was again very nice. Um, that's all. Thank you for listening. Any How did you end up with double Um sorry, that's You can not answer that question. Probably like some random like backfill job or something. Uh, so is that like a thing that happened? It used to be. We um, it's no longer a problem these days because we we sort of have this script that will clip on uh, multi-threaded replication when things get too lags, and that usually does the trick. And then we'll clip off multi-threaded replication. And uh, we, you know we don't want to win all the time because it's a little buggy. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it is like pretty concerning when it does happen. Cool. Thank you, everyone.